I am so looking forward to this conversation with Catherine Brackett. And part of the things we're going to look at is some amazing changes she's made in a relatively short period of time to her firm and how they made a difference. And it's really to inspire you that that that's something you can do too. So Catherine, please go ahead and introduce yourself, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Hi, uh, my name is Catherine Brackett and I have Lighthouse Bookkeeping and Business Services in Tucson, Arizona. And I do bookkeeping and financials and get the books all ready for the CPAs. And I do a lot of um, oddball sales tax filings for various states and personal property tax and kind of just a lot of odd tax filings as far as state. Excellent. And one of the things I want to just start off with right away is maybe taking a look back. And before we started working together, what were things like for you and your firm at that point? Oh, before I hired my business coach, um, I was working from 6 a.m. until 3 p.m. Monday through Friday uh, with a pretty, pretty normal lunch break. And I was kind of stuck in a, um, in a situation where I had an assistant that was working with me. And I, my role was that I had some work to do. And then I would audit her work. And I, I was just bogged down with a lot of detail, but I didn't really notice, you know, I wasn't aware of all the things I was doing that were unnecessary because they had kind of added up over the past four or five years. And I got to the point in July of uh, last year where I had a situation where I ended up getting rid of my assistant. And then that was a real big awakening for me. Um, I started doing all of my clients work myself. And that's when I noticed a lot, you know, all of the unnecessary things that were taking place. That's when I started to see how quickly and efficiently what I did have on my list could be done. And that's when I reached out to Lauren because everything changed and suddenly I wasn't work. I didn't have all that work. All mm -hmm. that audit work went away. So then from what I'm hearing is that you actually became more efficient once you let go of your assistant. And even though you took things back on your plate, it was really an eye opener as to what your business was like and where things could be streamlined and where there was room for improvement. Exactly. So I was faced with a situation where I was going to be delivering the exact same thing to my clients that I always had for years and years, but I wasn't going to get paid for it because it didn't take me the time and I didn't take my assistant's time. So I started looking into a thing called value-based pricing. And that's how I found Lauren, found you, Lauren. And, and that kind of leads me into my next question as to what was the maybe momentum or what motivated you to maybe look for some business coaching and um, consider us working together? Well, as soon as I noticed how quickly and efficiently I was getting everything done, and I knew that my bills were going to just continue to drop, the more efficient I became, and yet my clients were still going to be getting the same product, I started searching the internet for weeks. I did lots of searches. I listened to a lot of interviews. I read a bunch of articles and I discovered that there is a thing called value-based pricing. And I found you, Lauren, through a interview that you did with a guy on accounting today. Um, and during the interview, everything that he asked you and all of your answers, it, it was like, this is exactly what I'm needing. I need to figure out how to make this switch from billable hours to value-based pricing. And, and I knew I had to change that, so. Well, you're talking about something that's very near and dear to my heart is that when you connect your fees to time, as you add in technology or you gain expertise and you get more efficient, you get punished for it. 
There's yes. no incentive to be more efficient. Exactly. That was July and August were like, oh no, I'm being punished. I'm I'm mm-hmm. taking a 50% drop in revenue for doing things better. And and I think the other thing that I wanted to mention also is that a lot of times firm owners don't even realize that there are a variety of price strategies out there. It's not just about charging for your time, whether it's an alley rate or a fixed fee, but the value pricing is something that allows you to earn more. And because it's not connected to time, your profit margins can actually skyrocket as you get more efficient. Yes, yes. It was exactly what I was looking for. And was there anything else that kind of motivated you to increase your clients' rates, aside from the fact that once you took back all the work from your assistant, you realized you were more efficient and that would lower your invoices? Yes, there was a couple of factors. Um, I got a lot of work from different CPAs in town. And one of them, we had a pretty close working relationship and we were on the phone and I asked her about my fees and she told me I'm too low by half. Mm -hmm. And then I, I searched around a couple of other just informal research about fees and I determined that that was true. And so I immediately started to um, focus on what I was delivering and how much it really is worth as opposed to, you know, how much how much time it took me. I, I want to say that that CPA being honest with you, um, that is someone you want to stay connected with because the fact that not everybody would have let you know that your rates were too low. Someone would just continue to take advantage of that. So yes. please stay connected. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah, that's wonderful. And, and I know that, making the transitions in your business and also about the decision to engage with a business coach can bring up a lot of yes buts where you can second guess it and overthink yourself. Were there any obstacles that occurred for you when we were talking about working together? Well, the obstacles that I encountered were that I had never hired a business coach or worked with one. So I really didn't know what my expectations should be. I knew what I wanted. I wanted to make this switch. And I also wanted to become in control of my business. Mm -hmm. That was another dimension that we haven't talked about is that when I started my business, I just kind of fell into it. And for the beginning years, I just kind of felt like I was being dragged along by my clients' needs and I wasn't really in the driver's seat. Mm-hmm. And so I really wanted to gain, you know, ownership of my business, make my own business decisions. And I knew what I wanted to accomplish, but I'd never had a coach. So I was nervous that my coach might not be able to help me accomplish the things that I really needed. The other obstacle that I had was, um, just cash flow. I didn't have a lot of available cash. I was living month to month through billable hours that were rapidly dropping. I didn't have a lot of available cash. And so that was also an obstacle. Mm -hmm. And and I can understand that because I feel that working together is definitely an investment. Um, I don't want it to be a course. I want to be that this is something that's going to increase your revenues, your profit margin, reduce your workload. uh, But also having it be where this is, it's a big leap. Yeah, it was. And and and, and so I feel that um, trust needs to be earned. It's not something that I expect from anybody. And I really want to acknowledge the transparency of having some nervousness about that because I, I think that it ought to be a little bit of a difficult decision for people because you're, you're committing to you making some changes also. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, I thought about it for several days or a week. I I called references. I looked up all kinds of things. I did my research and I I knew that I needed help. I needed support. I was all by myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anyone to help me make changes in my business. And that really was what made me decide at the end is it might be more than I thought it would be. It might be 
foreign because I've never done it. But the, the, the bottom line is I need help. Mm -hmm. And so I just, like you said, took the leap. And, and, and so you're bringing up something that um, I want to kind of ask you also is that there was so, you had a very specific agenda, which was taking back control of your business because of uh, pat particular clients that were very demanding. Yeah. And, and that was really your primary reason for us working together. How long do you think it took before you were able to notice any results that were directly aligned with the main reason that we were working together? Well, it's quite remarkable because the changes started to happen even before we had our first one-on-one. -on -one. And I can't explain why that is, but it's true. From the time I decided to hire you to, to even just those few weeks of waiting for my schedule to arrive, I was already in the mindset of change. And mm -hmm. I started to see benefits immediately. Yeah. And, and and I and I think that that is actually evidence of going from thinking about something when you're in research mode to actually being committed to make the changes necessary. Once that switch happened and that you knew you were vested in doing this in a variety of different ways, you, you things changed before we even had our first session, like you said. It, it's really, really great. It was really amazing. I was remarking about it to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's already working and I haven't even met with my coach yet. <laughs> uh, okay. So with that being said, um, people love to know the how-tos. Any particular strategies that you followed or worked for you with growing your bank account as well as freeing up your time? Yes. The packages made all the difference. The prepaid packages. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe the timing of delivering them. I felt like I chose a time when tax season was mostly over. So March, after the March 15th de tax deadline for S Corps. Um, and I created my packages and I went on to a prepaid basis. Well, it, so in one month, I realized the profits for an entire year in my bank account in one month. Wow. Okay. So in one month, mm -hmm. everything changed as far as your cash flow. Yes. And it's partly because more than half of my clients opted for the yearly package. So they paid me up front in March for an entire year. Okay. I, I just want to reiterate that because not everybody is familiar with packages. So can you explain how you put a package together, what that meant as far as how you work with your clients? Yes. Um, the way that I did it was I used the templates that you provided. Mm -hmm. And I also watched um, some videos that you had given me access to. And I uh, created them from the template. I created what I do every day on a package. And I, I created the pricing. It was really that was the hardest part, was trying to fit my clients into a category um, and getting away from this, oh, everybody's different, everybody's special, everybody has these unique needs, which is true, but I still need to fit them into my packet. I still want a package to deliver to them. So mm -hmm. I used an Excel spreadsheet to really just crunch the numbers to, to deliver to me exactly what I was dealing with, exactly how it was gonna impact each person, how it's going to compare to what they normally pay, what it's going to include, what it's not going to include. So that was kind of laborious, but it was really worth it because now I have my packages and next March when it's time to renew, I just need minor tweaks and out go my packages. They're already built. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I used. I used templates and I used an Excel spreadsheet to help me true up all the numbers and know exactly what I was dealing with. And just to kind of recap then, th this wasn't a long drawn out process of months and months and months. You, you actually transitioned everybody in one month. I did. I think the the creation of the, the literature, the package literature and the mm -hmm. pricing and my Excel spreadsheet, I think it was about a week to 10 days. 
And and I remember you and I went back and forth with a lot of the wording that you were going to use to really fine tune it so that it represented the changes you were making in your firm. Yes, exactly. And what's interesting was that I didn't work on anything else, which is really unusual because I'm usually working on my clients every day. Well, I didn't work on them at all. I worked on my business. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of refreshing. And- and 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 that's an eye opener that you can actually carve out time to work on your business what, instead of working on everybody else's. But the other thing that you were talking about is how you became so profitable with your cash flow changing once everybody opted into the packages. And from what I understand, you gave people two pricing options. They can either pay you on a monthly basis or they could prepay for the year in full. Is that correct? That's correct. And I gave a discount of 20% if they signed up for the whole year at once. And even if they opted for the monthly, you are now going from invoicing where you were getting paid after the fact to now getting prepaid for your work as That's well. That's correct. That is correct. And and I'm just going to jump ahead and ask, you know, did anybody have any pushback or or if somebody had questions, how, how did you deal with some of that? Because people don't like change. Um, I only had two clients who questioned the rate that I gave them. Mm-hmm. And I explained it to one of them using, um, I used a parable, uh, the engineer with the hammer and the machine And how he, I don't know if you know the parable, but he ends up giving the, he retires and he get they call him in because the machine broke. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, I'll fix the machine. He brings his hammer. He hits the machine. The machine starts. And he gives him an invoice for $5,000. And the manager says, you were here for five minutes and you hit the machine. Now, how come you gave me an invoice for $5,000? And he said, well, if you look at the lines that I itemized, it's five dollars for the hammer, but it's all the rest of it is for knowing where to hit the machine. So with mm-hmm. one client, I gave her the parable, which she loved, and she was completely. She said, "I completely understand." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and with the other one, that was kind of complaining. He came back and he said, "Well, I'm going to be retiring. I'm semi-retired. I'm not going to have that much work." And I simply said, as soon as your bank statements and all your activity reflects that reduction in work, I'd be happy to move you into a lower package. Mm-hmm. And he did. He never responded to that. So. Uh, okay. So then um, the fact is that you knew how to respond to them and, and you yes. didn't cave in. I didn't cave in. And in fact, I entered into a negotiation with one of my largest clients mm-hmm. that took us several several uh, days, maybe even a whole week of going back and forth. And I held my ground through this negotiation. And I ended up with them taking back a lot of the stuff I was doing back to their in-house staff, which they have over 150 employees. And I said, you got your accounting staff can take this and this and this. And I was able to give back probably quite a bit of work, busy mm-hmm. work, and I was able to transition more into teaching, training, and oversight. And and, and part of what I also want to uh, really highlight is that you are very, very client-centered. I know you deeply care about your clients. You want to please them. You're not looking for anything confrontational whatsoever, but you were able to stand your ground and not cave in to anybody that was questioning why you were raising your fees. Yeah, it's true. I, I just held on to the dream. I mean, I had um, Lauren and the, the support that is received. I have to say the support that is there in our mastermind meetings, in our accountability calls, especially mm-hmm. the group of us cheering each other on and being there for each other. It really makes all the difference. Which also shows you're no longer in a silo. You now have a cohort of other firm owners who are on the same journey as you are, and they are able to cheer you on. They're able to call you out when you may be caving in a little bit or give you some insights as to how to even get a better result. Yes, yes. That part has been absolutely unexpected and really wonderful. 
And moving forward the conversation, uh, are there any strategies that you use for analyzing and maybe quoting for the value now instead of time? Well, uh, I've only been able to quote one or two, I think, since this happened. And it's not so much for me about the quoting of the work, it's more about the client and whether or not we're a good fit. I'm less inclined to take every person that comes through the door or mm -hmm. calls me up. And now I understand thoroughly the cost in my time and my energy with someone who isn't a good fit. And I know what to look for now because I've been doing these exercises and I've been working on these worksheets and uh, you've been making me think about what are the red flags? And so now when someone calls or someone um, is inquiring, not only is my package already ready and I can just send them my package. Mm -hmm. When we're dialoguing, I get a sense for whether or not I even want to work with this person. You've gotten to the point where you're now cherry picking your clients. Yeah. If there's any red flags or something just feels a little bit out of sync, not fully of integrity, you're happy to let them move on. Right, right. Or even if it's just um, one of my big pet peeves is if they don't really care about their financials or their books. I don't want to be in a situation where I care more than they do. So I kind of feel mm -hmm. them out and if I can kind of get a sense for that. So mm -hmm. then let's go to increasing fees with current clients. Is there anything that you did to kind of kickstart that and um, begin making it happen? Because you did it quicker than the average person does. Yeah, it happened quite quickly. Well, I did it, I guess I did it over the course of five months. Mm -hmm. uh, I There was a marked decline in the amount of hours that it took me to do the work. And at the same time, I adjusted my fees um, to what they normally pay. And um, it, that took place over probably five months before the packages were created. Mm hmm. Okay. So some of this um, you started doing and that even though by March 15th, you sent everybody the letters about changing over to packages, you started doing slow increases on a monthly basis up until then. Exactly. Because at every month when I would do the work, it was getting faster and faster and quicker. And so I just kept them at the same level or or moved them up towards what their package was going to be. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things you did mention earlier is efficiency. Is there any other things you've done to maybe fine tune your system and did help to increase your revenues? Yes, uh, I have rearranged the workflow as well as my work schedule. And I do all the similar tasks together. So um, let's say I'm working on bank recs. I work on bank recs all that day. So instead of being over here and over there and kind of just scattered throughout the day, putting out fires or doing research and booking this and doing bank recs and all these varied tasks, I focus on one thing and I get a bunch of my clients done at once, which saves a lot of time mm -hmm. and just moves things out. So you found that by maybe chunking things together that were similar, you were more efficient yeah. than going back and forth from one yeah. client to another client and maybe doing a variety of different tasks over the course of the day. Yeah, like I do all the sales tax on one day mm -hmm. instead of doing all their other stuff and their sales tax. You know, while I'm logged into the website, the state's website, I do everybody. So mm -hmm. all these things save time. Um, I'm sure that you're giving somebody a light bulb moment right now, Catherine. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. It's kind of simple, but I didn't, I wasn't doing it that way. <laughs> but then I started and it was, now it's interesting. Ever since I've hired you as my business coach, I'm actively looking for ways to increase efficiency. Before, I wasn't really, I was just kind of on autopilot, mm -hmm. just kind of wandering through the day, doing what presented itself. I feel much more in control of what happens each day now. 
And and I just want to really acknowledge that because um, a lot of people wish for it, but they never take the next move to make it happen. Oh yeah, it's it's scary, but it's so worth it. Mm-hmm. And 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 speaking about that, so it's so easy to overthink things, get in your own way, postpone, take an action. Were there any hurdles maybe that you did face? And if so, what did you do to kind of get over them or do it anyway? Well, boundaries is a really big challenge for me. I have a lot of um, trouble setting them, enforcing them, sticking to them. So that has just been a personal challenge that I've just had to really um, find find support for because they're so important and mm-hmm. it's so rewarding when I can stick to my boundaries and they end up being respected. Um, so that's the hard work for me. Mm-hmm. And, and setting boundaries can feel difficult. It can feel fun- confrontational or someone might push back. Um, did any of this kind of overflow into your personal life also you, where you've noticed any changes? Um, I think so. I, I believe that it has because the, the stronger I get at setting boundaries, it, I start setting them everywhere in my life, not Mm -hmm. just at work. So Mm -hmm. it has definitely had a spillover effect. Sweet. So now that you have more boundaries, um, you made some changes in your business, you've improved your cash flow, you value pricing your work. Anything that you've noticed that's maybe different in your firm as well as your personal life? Oh, everything is different. If I wanted to, I could take a week off. Just take a week off. I could never do that before. Um, If I get up in the morning and I don't feel really good or didn't sleep well, I choose whether I want to work that day or not. My life is completely different. Um, mm-hmm. There's no more um, what it used to be when I was on hourly billing is I would work all month long every day. And at, at the last week of the month, there was this giant push to get as much work done as possible so that my billing would be as high as I could make it. That's gone. All that stress is gone. My new schedule, I work Tuesday through Thursday from around 6 a.m. until noon. And I am now pursuing hobbies. I'm doing things, cooking more. I'm able to deep clean my house. Um, I, mm. I've regained my life. So it's wonderful. And getting back to your hours that you're working, you said before that you were working before five days a week, Monday to Friday from about six to three. And now you've reduced to Tuesday to Thursday, six to noon, but it didn't affect your bank accounts. No. In fact, there's more money in my bank account than I usually ever have. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. So is there anything else maybe that we didn't touch on that you feel is important to mention? Um, I would just like to stress to anyone watching this video that the support that you get from the groups is just invaluable. Um, It was a hidden benefit, something I didn't expect, something I didn't even really realize I needed. Um, I knew I was alone. I knew I needed support and help. but I had no idea how good it was going to feel to talk to other people that were going through what I was going through and just be able to talk it out. Um, I think that part of what you offer should really be highlighted. It, It makes a huge difference to the people who attend those meetings. I I so appreciate that, Catherine. Um, I feel very honored to be part of your inner circle. Um, you've made changes, you've implemented. I know that you've inspired others as well. And if somebody wanted to reach out to you, what would be the best way for them to get in touch? Um, they can email me. My email is Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y dot Lighthouse Tucson at gmail.com and I'll spell Tucson. Tucson is T-U-C-S-O-N. So that's Kathy.LighthouseTucson at gmail.com. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kathy. And this is Warren Fogelman with Business Success Solution, showing firm owners how to double their income working half the time. 
Take care. Bye. Bye.